official banking partner of the Stony Brook Seawolves. The officials, Rob Tyberski is the lead, Matt Curtin, Christopher Slattery. We are ready to go, and this should be an exciting game. And first possession, Kurt, goes to NJIT, and it got to the hands quickly of Damon Lynn. They went down in the paint, and that little left-hand floater, Abdul Lewis, with the first two points. Well, he's a guy who brings a lot of great size, a transfer from South Alabama after one year, and really gives them an inside presence that they haven't quite had. They've been very guard-oriented. Now they've got a big fella inside. Lewis came in averaging just a shade over six. Here's Lynn, watched by... Lucas Woodhouse coming off an outstanding effort. Left open, shooting the three is the co-captain Tim Coleman, a 6'5 senior out of Union, New Jersey, and the famous St. Anthony High School. Well, he's a, he's a terrific player, a Swiss Army knife. He can give you everything. Great defense as you see Woodhouse there stepping up, knocking down the three. And that's a huge three. And speaking with Jeff Bowles just today, he said when he is aggressive, more aggressive, I've given him the green light. We are a much better team. And the Seawolves need him, to be quite honestly. He's a senior. They're looking for leadership. In tight, drawing the foul. And it's a blocking foul. And it looks to be whistled on Tyrell Sturdivant, the 6'7 junior from Chester, Pennsylvania. It'll be his first personal. And going to the line will be Damon Lynn. What more can you say about the all-time leading scorer in school history? Shattered the mark by Chris Flores. He broke the record back in November. 1,724 points was the record. That's 20 and 31 now. 20, 31 for Lynn. 1,700 was impressive enough. Oh. <laughs> when you eclipse the 2,000-point mark, now you're really balling. This guy, he's a terrific scorer, shooter, but he gives you other things. He's a great steals guy, an assist guy. He's just a terrific all-around basketball player. Second in the A-Sun Conference at 22 points a game. Plenty of time to shoot. Sturdivant with the... Ball and is back to the basket, wheeling to the right. A little bit too strong in the rebound. Hauled down there by Tim Coleman, who's one of the better defenders in the Atlantic Sun Conference, the A-Sun Conference. Look, there's a highlight film of him getting a steal against Albany last year and finishing it with a dunk. He uses his length 6'5". He can shoot over you. He uses the long arms to defend. and He is really a key player in their attack and their defense. Four seconds on the shot clock, have a tie-up, and the possession arrow is in favor of the Stony Brook Seawolves, down by four, about two minutes in to this first half. What's very important for the Seawolves, Carl, is that they play that half-court defense and protract possessions on the part of NJIT. If it gets into a run-and-gun game, that's very dangerous for the Seawolves because the Highlanders are very adept at dictating the pace. Yama with the basket. Well, he's been an X Factor all season. Really a guy who can do a lot of different things scoring-wise and hadn't really been taken out of the tool shed before this year. Coming up with the steal was Sturdivant gives to Woodhouse. Change of pace off the dribble, then went penetration, whistle on the outside, and this will be whistled against NJIT. I know you appreciate this. Two guards, really the floor leaders for the their team, but they do it so differently. Lint with quickness, explosion, Woodhouse, a little sleight of hand, hesitation, very, very different types of players. Personal foul, whistler number 23, Osa Isaboa for NJIT. He is a senior from Staten Island. Fresh 30. Plenty of time for Stony Brook in the half court set right now. Looking back door cut was Woodhouse. Sturdivant on the floor, reversing. Takes the return with 15 to shoot. To his left, strong move. Tyrell Sturdivant with his first two. Second leading score on the team coming in at 11 points tonight. And, and that takes a lot of work, Carl, that little jump hook in the lane. That's a lot of practice using the offhand there. A move that he's worked on now, really under the tutelage when he was playing beside and next to Jimmy Warney. Good look down low, knocked away, partially deflected, pulled down by Junior St. Tell, but could not save on the baseline. But a great effort by St. Tell, the 6'7", 190-pound junior from Mays Landing, New Jersey. 
I don't know of too many guys who can get up quicker and higher than he does with that great length, a 45 inch vertical and just explosive, still learning the finer points of the game, but great athlete. Kick it back outside, Abdul Lewis. Cam Mitchell on the floor, number three for Stony Brook. Off the weak side, didn't hit anything on the putback, did not go. A second putback, and it's put home. Second field goal, he's got four, Tim Coleman. Well, this team not afraid to hit the offensive glass, very aggressive, and then a good block out there by Coleman. You see him already, offensive board, defensive board, back to back. And Brian Kennedy, one of the factors that they use for every single game on a backdoor cut. It was rejected, knocked out of the hands of Chris Jenkins, the former Hofstra player. But uh, Brian Kennedy, first year, 1990 grad from Monmouth, said, look, we have the same principles for every single night. Limit the turnovers, defend without fouling and rebound. They're getting a lot of that right now. Yes, and they're doing an excellent job controlling the defensive glass, not giving the Seawolves second shot opportunities. There's Jenkins. Jenkins, a big guy, 6'4", 215, also out of New Jersey. Got a great stat from New Jersey, and that is a dribble drive. Damon Lynn, his first field goal, he's got four. This school is the most localized roster in college basketball, only 35 miles, basically, for every player from whatever direction they come in. Step back by Woodhouse, second field goal, he's got five. You know who's second in the country behind NJIT? In localized recruiting? I do not. Villanova Wildcats, Jay Wright, 125 miles. How about that? Keeping the championship recipe right there at home. Well, I said to Brian Kennedy this morning, who's the nephew of the former great coach, down low, the basket put in by Lewis, he's got four. His uncle is Pat Kennedy, who had so many great stops, Iona, Florida State, DePaul, Montana, and Towson, 499 career wins. And I said, what do you do? Do you just open up the front door and yell and everybody in the state comes to Newark, New Jersey? He said, basically. <laughs> Recruiting is an art, and when you're keeping your in-state players viable, that's a big, big deal not to be understated. Timeout on the floor, 14:36 remaining in this first half. NJIT by four. You're watching College Basketball on ESPN3. Sometimes, when it's quiet, I can still see the color and hear the noise. It's home. It's our house. It's our house. It's our house. We went here. We went for them. Because in America East. Win it home, win it all. They think that's who. We think. We think. We think. We think. Colleagues and I really like being in the American East Conference because all of the campuses focus on the student athlete. We're delighted to be in America East because we see academic excellence, we see leadership development on and off the field, and athletic excellence. We value academics, we clearly value and enjoy athletics, but we have things in proportion. If you're looking for a conference where you can play at the highest level and study at the highest level, you can do that in America East. Carl Reuter and Kurt Hilton back here at Stony Brook. Jeff Bowles, the first-year head coach, 1995 graduate of Ohio University, the two-time captain in the middle at Huddle. And speaking with him today, Kurt, I said, what do you have to do tonight against NJIT? And one of the things that he said was, listen, we're coming off a big road win against St. Francis. We haven't played in 11 days. That kind of worries me because you don't know what direction the team can go. But he said, we need to get off to a fast start. Even though they're down by four, Shooting four of eight, I would think, is getting off to a fast start. You just have to defend on the other end, though. Yeah, absolutely, and keeping this NJI team, team off the glass, not getting second shots, and then sort of diminishing their efficiency, those are all key staples. And the Seawolves, remember, they're kind of challenged on that rebounding front ever since losing Jameel Warren. It's a very, very different team 
Last year, they were one of the best re rebounding teams in America. This year, they're still finding their way. Stony Brook leads the all-time series 5-0 when these two schools are at Division One. They were both Division Three products playing out of the Skyline Conference many years ago. In fact, it's a year ago to the date, December the 28th, 2015, 83-61 win for Stony Brook in Newark, New Jersey. Woodhouse letting it fly from outside the arc. It's off the mark. Your, your level of preparation is second to none. You, you, you got everything. <laughs> Wait, I haven't hit you with the famous alum from NJIT yet. <laughs> we'll save that one. I, I know a couple, but that's it. I, I think you've got something big in store. Oh, I got something big in store. Chris Jenkins, it rimmed out, and there is a big body on the boards for Stony Brook. Roland Niyama. Well, great blocking out by the Seawolves. You saw a body on a body, and one of the things that they do, they look themselves into a block out. What I mean by that is that they didn't just turn their back and feel for a guy. They identified where he was and locked up. Taking it baseline, and by the way, Jacob Petrus has checked in. Baseline move there by Cam Mitchell, who is a key for tonight because he is the best Stony Brook perimeter defender. He's got his work cut out for him with the likes of Coleman, Jenkins and of course Damon Lynn. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret here in Stony Brook that Cam Mitchell will do what it takes to defend guards. He's a guy who does all the dirty work, doesn't look to score, can score. Probably his highlight moment in his career offensively was 13 points when the Seawolves knocked off a Washington team that at the time was ranked top 10. But Cam's a guy who's the bumps and bruise guy. He'll leave the game black and blue, floor burns, takes charges, all that kind of stuff. Very unselfish. He gets one of two from the line. He's 72%, and they sub in UC Eregbu, the six foot, 180 pound junior from Sacramento, California, is a three point shooter as well. You got a host of three point shooters out on the floor between both teams. The Seawolves haven't even shown you Brian Secunda yet, a guy who comes off the bench, 6'6. Six, six. And he was hot, red hot, their last game out with five threes. Mohamed Bendari, number 34, 6'9", 235 pound sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey. He was a high school teammate of Coleman at St. Anthony, played for the Hall of Famer in Bob Hurley. Yaboa bounces it baseline. Oh, what a sweet looking move! Niyama's second field goal for four. That looked like the dream shake right there. A little footwork with a nice finish. Got a one-point game, 12.45 on the clock. Anthony Tark, number 12. He's on the floor for NJIT. Stepping through, reversed, and did not go. Last touch by the Highlanders, who come in with a mark of 6-8. and eight. But this is a team that has struggled on the road. Only one of seven. But they have played a stretch of road games, Kurt Hilton, that are beyond the top people in the country, and this is a great way to get ready for your conference. Well, you do this, as you pointed out before, when you're senior laden and your guys can sort of handle the results. Win or lose, you know that it's a great prep course for your regular season, your conference season. Of course, NJIT playing out of the Atlantic Sun. They started a road trip with a win against UMass Lowell. Then they went to Minnesota, Kent State, Iona, and Temple. Lost all four of them, but played some really close games. They played on the road this year, 17 Purdue in November, and held them, I think it was a 10-point game. So they know how to play. Even though they're 1-7 on the road, they've played stiff competition. And, and in some tough places to play as well. What a great move with his right hand going window from the left side. Lucas Woodhouse now has seven. Well, that's what... Again, Jeff Bowles alluded to not just the fast start, but I think they're aided when Lucas Woodhouse gets off to the fast start. Meanwhile, Lynn kind of feeling his way right now. Seawolves doing a good job of denying him to this point. Shaquan Gibbs, number 11, is on the floor. 6'1", 150-pound freshman from Hillside, New Jersey, who is a coach's dream, according to Brian Kennedy. We'll get more into that when we come back. 11.51 remaining in the first half. It's a one-point game. Back with more right after this.
Carl Reuter and Kurt Hilton back here at Stony Brook. It's a one-point game. The Seawolves on top, 14-13, 11-50 remaining in this first half. And again, NJIT, if you're not familiar, this was a team that was coached up until last year by Jimmy Angles, who took the job over at Columbia only 10 years as a Division I school, and this team is on the rise. They play in the A-Sun Conference, which is made up of NJIT, Florida Gulf Coast, Stetson, Lipscomb, Kennesaw State, North Florida, Jacksonville, and USC Upstate. And in the conference, Florida Gulf Coast was seeded one preseason, North Florida two, and this NJIT team, Kurt, is seeded three. Yeah, I mean, and they deserve it. They, they've really been building this program. Um, they also have a fabulous facility that's still underway. Uh, I know it's getting unveiled very, very shortly, but they've done a terrific job. We had a quick visit with Lenny Kaplan, their athletic director, just before the game. They're doing big things there in New Jersey. Here's the big guy, Bendari. There's Gibbs, whose father, Shelton, and that's another three, second of the game. He's got eight. Gibbs' father is a graduate from St. Peter's, played for Bob Duquette in the days when Iona was coached by Jim Valvano. The assistant coach was Pat Kennedy, Brian Kennedy's uncle, who's the head coach here at NJIT. That's like zero degrees of separation. It's ridiculous because I covered Shelton Gibbs when he was playing at St. Peter's. Now I've got his son playing here at NJIT. And then, and then you tie into all of this because Lenny Kaplan, he's a, he's a you know an alum of your alma mater, St. John's. Which is, it's crazy. And he, two towns over on the south shore of Nassau County growing up. You're the center of my universe. <laughs> <laughs> to the corner it goes with 12 to shoot. Two-point game, NJIT with the lead. Seven on the shot clock. Backdoor cut, Lynn. What a great look by Coleman. Well, we saw that little flash up. Fake like he's coming up to take the three and then back cuts. First time it was blocked by St. Tell. Second time worked like a charm. Here's Michael Almonese. Had 15 points a couple of games ago in the uh, loss at Hofstra. Petrus backing it in. Fake right, went left. That's a strong move on the blocks. And unusual because that's a, a work in progress by Petrus. A guy that doesn't necessarily come naturally to him. A little more comfortable facing up like a lot of players in Europe, but that's a quality move. Jacob Petrus again lost a lot of weight from a year ago. Getting his legs right now. He's 6'11", 260-pound junior from Slovakia as Abdul Lewis comes back into the game. And he replaces Mohamed Bendari. Bendari gave him a couple of minutes. Again, he's out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Well, Jacob, playing now, minutes weren't really available behind Jamil Warney. When you got a 2,000-point guy on the blocks and 1,000-rebound guy, I mean, there's not a lot of chance to play. Batted around and hauled down by Lewis and... That was a big rebound because it sets it up for Tim Coleman's third triple of this first half, and he's got 11. He's the only player in the A-Sun with more than 1,000 points and over 600 rebounds. He's a terrific player, and like I said, so valuable because he contributes so much to this team. He's got game. Got 13 double doubles, which is a school record. Eight to shoot. Almonese looking for the screen with five to shoot. Got the double. There's a backdoor cut. He was looking for Brian Secunda, who's good to see him back on. Had a bone bruise. Missed the game against Hofstra, but he's back into the rotation. And he's as good as a catch-and-shoot guy as there is in the, at least America East, and a lot of the country. Absolutely. And at 6'6", six, six, when he catches, he can shoot over you. I mean, he uses that length to elevate over defenses, and you know what? Maybe it was a little home cooking because he had those five threes again, St. Francis of Pennsylvania. He's a he's a state college guy right around the corner from Penn State. He shot five of nine from the arc in that game against St. Francis, two of two from the line. The foul went against Stony Brook, so it is NJIT. Again, NJIT, the Highlanders, came in with a mark of six and eight. 4-0 at home, 1-7 on the road, 1-1 one one on the neutral floor in the non-conference part of the schedule. Here's Lynn to his left on a dribble drive. Got a piece. Petras kept it in and gets it to Almonese. And that's a freshman who got away with one because maybe 
He was taken out a little bit too much, but he did get away with it. He did. That's one of those as a coach. You're like, no, 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 no. Great shot. <laughs> First two in the game for Al Monesi, the freshman from Brentwood, whose high school last night lost a great match to Harborfields, who's the hometown for Lucas Woodhouse. So there was a, probably a little rivalry in that locker oh, room. Oh, I'm sure last night. I'll bet the two of them went to that ball game. Here's Al Monesi, whose high school coach, a great man, Anthony Jimenez. Al Monesi again gives it up. Here's Secunda putting it on the floor. Petrus, he's not shooting from 20. Five to shoot for Al Monesi, drew the double, letting fly as the horn would sound. That'll be a shot clock violation. A quasi Yeboah just couldn't get any kind of rim, and now substitutions for Stony Brook. In a three-point game with 8.03 remaining in this first half. This has been a very lively game, Kirk. It, it really has. Both teams playing with great energy. Sometimes you wonder when you have a protracted break whether or not a team is going to come out sluggish. But both teams, they've been competing and competing hard so far. Great crowd during this Christmas, New Year's vacation. The students aren't around, but still the locals came out. That's a tough fadeaway and got it to drop. Tim Coleman has 13 points here in the first half. Well, we've seen him rain down threes. Now he goes baseline, gives you a nice post up. And you know what? When you get that kind of roll, that means you're getting perfect backspin on your shot. Secunda with the answer, though. He stepped back three for Bryant Secunda, his first three of the contest. Bryant Secunda came into this game. Averaging seven points. Hey, he just got scored on. He says, you can't do that to me. I got to get some. <laughs> Here's Coleman. Watched by Secunda. Slipped around. Abdul Lewis. Another three by Coleman. Lighting it up with 16. Hey, he's feeling it right there. When you're feeling it, you shoot it with great confidence. No hesitation. Great stroke. We're seeing just one of those times where the rim's big for a player. Great overplay there by Gibbs, 15th to shoot for Stony Brook. Niyama with a dribble drive, taking it deep, and then the layoff, offensive foul, nullify the basket by Petrus, and holding his ground, Abdul Lewis, with a great defensive stand. There is a timeout on the floor. Six minutes and 40 seconds remain in the first half. NJIT by five over Stony Brook. Back with more right after this. If you can play, you can play. For understanding. Equality. Inclusion. Respect. Integrity. For acceptance. Dignity. Trust. For pride. Because in America East, athletes are judged on talent, heart, desire, and hard work, and not on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. You can play at Albany. Binghamton. Hartford. You can play at Maine. UMass Lowell. UMBC. At New Hampshire. Stony Brook. Vermont. You can play at America East. We are the curious, the explorers, the innovators, defiant in the face of the status quo, unbound by tradition, unlimited in our potential, relentless in the pursuit of tomorrow's big ideas. We are Stony Brook University. We go far beyond. Sometimes, when it's quiet, I can still see the color and hear the noise. It's home. It's our house. It's our house. It's our house. We win here. We win for them. Because in America East. Win it home, win it all. They think that's who. We think. We think. We think. We think. You're looking at the NJIT Highlanders huddled around head coach first year in Brian Kennedy, who for four years previous was the assistant coach to Jimmy Angles. He started his college coaching career in 1997 at DePaul under his uncle Pat. And I asked him today, what did you learn from your uncle? 499 career wins in college, took numerous teams to the NCAA tournament. He said three things. He said, the attitude of the game, how to manage a team through a season, and understand the situation. 
words of wisdom from his uncle Pat Kennedy. Certainly are. And, you know, I like that last one, understanding the situation, because that is at the root of what so many players either do well or don't do well. Understand where you're at in the game, but then you can translate that into off-court as well in terms of taking care of yourself, taking care of the academics, doing all of the things. So situational understanding, I think, is a great, great principle. Five-point game. The difference is NJIT has five second-chance points. Stony Brook doesn't have any. The other, Tim Coleman already has a career high with four three-pointers, and we're still in the first half. Speaking of threes, Lynn was off the mark, and he missed. Perfect four for four for Coleman, a guy yeah. who came into this game shooting a respectable 33%. But, I mean, when you start to eclipse your mark, that's big. Six for six from the field overall. <laughs> Incredible shooting performance with 623 remaining in this first half. You know, when, you say, when you're showing the team huddled around uh, the coach. I was like, they need to huddle around Coleman and keep him warm. <laughs> exactly. Here's Gibbs. Gets to Coleman. Look down low. Abdul Lewis in tight. He's got three field goals for six. That is a tough defense for Stony Brook. Right. At 6'10", he can really elevate that jump hook. You know, always a, a must-go-to tool in a big man's arsenal. And that was an element that they didn't have last year. This transfer from South Alabama brings that. You know, he's a skilled big who could play inside and out, and one of the keys this year for NJIT, four returning starters from a year ago, the opposite of what Stony Brook basically right. lost. And then when you add that piece, that's great. And you brought a guy home, too. He's a New York, uh, Newark East Side product. <laughs> Remember, you don't have to go far if you want to play at NJIT. 12 to shoot. Secunda gives it up to Lucas Woodhouse. Off to a quick start. He's got seven here, including a triple here in this first half. Spinning the layoff. Petrus, soft touch, second field goal. He's got four. When Jacob Petrus is active and tight, it only enhances what Stony Brook could do offensively. Without a doubt, because they missed that inside go-to scoring, with the high field goal percentage, and now they're getting it uh, in, in much sm smaller sample sizes from a guy like Petrus. Lynn, look out, Coleman. A little bit short. It's human. Yeah, actually, first shot he's missed in this game. He was 6 of 6, including 4 of 4 from outside the arc. Has a game-high 16 points. Came in averaging 12, second on the team to Lynn's 22. Rims have been kind to teams this year, shooting from three here at the Island Federal Credit Union <laughs> Arena. 41%. That despite the Seawolves playing pretty good defense here in this building. Jeff Bernstein working the numbers again, huh? That's what he does. I mean non-stop and overtime he was even at the shoot around today high off the glass lynn's got eight that's his third field goal also two of two from the line gets 35 minutes a night hasn't scored from the arc yet but i also see a guy that's letting the game come to him yes. not forcing the action so many times your leading score Got to dominate the ball. That's not Lynn's deal. Oh, oh my! Woodhouse with a shovel to Junior St. Town. And he grabbed that alley-oop from underneath and brought it up top. That's the 45-inch vertical on display there. Great vision by Woodhouse. And that's what Woodhouse does. He gives you the dimes. Backdoor cut. Jenkins kick out. Three ball in. Off the mark. Weak side rebound. Abdul Lewis. Again on the putback. See, there it is, keeping them off the glass. And now we've seen that back cut three times and an excellent ball reversal. And then Lewis pounding the glass, not once but twice, with a nice finish. This team's picked third in the A-Sun Conference. Well, I can't wait to see Florida Gulf Coast. Woodhouse got in trouble, put it behind his back, and Lynn came sneaking in there. And look at that, all the way down the bench. Brian Kennedy went to give his star player a pat on the back. There's a timeout on the floor. 3.48 remaining in the first half. NJIT by seven over Stony Brook.
Paul Roy to Kurt Hilton back here at Stony Brook. Very entertaining game. NJIT on top of Stony Brook by the score of 32 to 25. Both teams are lighting it up. NJIT shooting 13 of 25 from the field, including four of 10 from beyond the arc. All four of those belong to Tim Coleman. Stony Brook 11 of 17, two of four from the arc. The difference right now too, again, Kurt, is offensive rebounds. NJIT six, Stony Brook doesn't have any. You, you hit it right on the head, and that's the numbers I got circled on my stat sheet, Carl. And what concerns me if I'm Jeff Bowles, I'm shooting 65%, I'm trailing by seven, and I'm getting pounded on the glass at a two to one rate. The 65%, that's not sustainable. So I'm worried that my team's getting shut out of the glass and not getting easy put back opportunities. They were leading in uh, second chance in points off turnover. Well, NJIT has taken care of the basketball and in second chance points, the Highlanders nine to nothing. On the season, Stony Brook, it's out-rebounded by the opponent by five each night. They need to cut that number down to get back in the game. Three seconds on the shot clock. A little bit too strong, tapped up, did not go. Cam Mitchell on a loose ball. They get a fresh 30. Well, even if it's unconventional, they need those second opportunities. Got to find a way off misses to give yourself an opportunity. You know, this is only the third Highlanders team that I know of. Do you know the other? Well, you might not know one of the two. Roland Niyama has six on his third field goal. I, I know that the New York Yankees were right. once the Highlanders. Okay, and there's a high school in Nassau County, Herricks, the Highlanders. I'm a Brooklyn guy. So. Well, I know that, but other than that, I don't know any other Highlanders. If anybody knows, call Kurt. I'll give you his personal <laughs> cell phone number. I like the movie Highlander. Okay, but is that a no. team nickname? No. No. Okay. There you go. But it is a cool nickname. I like that. I like I like the different nicknames. 100%. A lot of Tigers and Bulldogs. No disrespect out there. but No, there are plenty of Tigers and Bulldogs. Highlander. Got a little character to it. Got a little swag. Well, now you're going to go Wizard of Oz, Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh, my. <laughs> From the corner, there it is. His first of the night now has 11 points. Damon Lynn. He has just tied Steph Curry all time. You know the guy, Steph Curry. I, I heard of him. Yeah, the next one will put him in eighth place all alone. And by the end of the year, he should be the all-time leader. College Hoops in threes. A chip shot that was missed by Alonzo Campbell, who just checked in. Rush, rushed that a little bit and was expecting some contact that never came. By the way, let me tie it in for you, too. Steph Curry, his alma mater, Davidson, they're in action tonight against an America East team tied to Stony Brook against Hartford. Coached by Bob McKillop, the Davidson Wildcats. Look out! He's all alone now, starting to feel it. And that's a quick timeout when you're down by 11. There he is, eighth all time. Quickly the great work by the control room. All the technicians getting that graphic up. Coached by Bob McKillop at Davidson. Another Long Island guy. Uh, Long Island guy, his wife's family from Long Island. Bob McKillop had great, great years. Started at Holy Trinity High School in Hicksville, then moved on to Long Island Lutheran and had some great, great players at Lehigh. And now for, I think, 20 or 21 years, he's leading the way down at Davidson in North Carolina. But how about this? You have to stand up and applaud what this guy's all about. And not only does he put the numbers up, Damon Lynn on the floor, He's got a 3.6 GPA, and that's what Brian Kennedy, as Jeff Ball says, look, we love basketball, but in these two institutions, it's the academics. It's the classroom first, basketball second. And to say that these two institutions are challenging <laughs> would be an understatement. I mean, these are some very, very talented young men, uh, both attending these institutions. 100% right. As we approach two minutes remaining in a very quick pace, first half. Woodhouse with a ball fake. Here's Mitchell. Has the opening. Went left hand high off the window. Cam Mitchell's first field goal. He's got three points on the night. Go a little old school there. That's a little George Gervin with the finger roll right oh, there. Oh, going Iceman. Now you're going Iceman Virginia Squires or Iceman San Antonio Spurs? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Spurs. That's what I know. Nah, I'm going Virginia Squires with the Iceman first. There's a whistle and stopping play with 143 remaining. Although I loved him with the Spurs, don't get me wrong. 
Going to the line is Abdul Lewis. This will be his first trip to the line in this game. On the season, 73%, 24 of 33. Missed that one. We haven't had too many free throws in this contest at all. Not at all. Off that free throw miss, opportunity here to get a second straight basket by Stony Brook. There's Woodhouse looking. Got the screen from Campbell. Three ball, Roland Niyama has nine. Nice look by Niyama, and that's what he does. We've seen him attacking off the dribble tonight, but he can pull up and knock down threes. By the way, Jeff Bernstein, he's working hard. He tells me yeah. that the Pulse Energy Jump Highlanders that play in New Zealand rugby, oh, my that's goodness. a reach. And then the Radford Highlanders in the Big South. Okay. So should we give Jeff Bernstein a standing ovation right now? I am. I am. <laughs> that's great work with 103 remaining as Campbell comes out. I like the resourcefulness there. Mm -hmm. Akwazi Yaboa is standing right in front of Jeff Bowles. Great to see Akwazi Yaboa back. Did not play against St. Francis, had a concussion, but he's back on the floor, and he is a guy that this team really needs. Yeah, they, they do, because he gives them scoring inside and outside. He's, he's a very versatile guy. As you see the active hands of Lynn there coming into play, disrupting the offense. That great play against Lehigh and Rutgers, which gave uh, Yaboa the America East Rookie of the Week. That one was off the mark, back tap. And it was pulled down there by Anthony Talk, the freshman out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. Great block out there as a team by NJIT. You saw four red jerseys there. Only Petrus inside really kept keeping the Seawolves at bay. 15 on the shot clock. They go down on the blocks. By the way, how did Talk get into the school? He's from Maryland. Now, remember, that's more than 35 miles outside of Newark. Yeah, every <laughs> once in a while you got to diversify. Although maybe Brian Kennedy has a very, very loud voice, and he projects, <laughs> and it went all the way down to the Maryland area. We go to the free throw line with the aforementioned Anthony Tark on the season. Been to the line 15 times. He's 40% of 6 of 15. Tremendous athlete. And only a freshman at 6'6", 205. That one was off the mark, and now Stony Brook can hold for this last shot. And this is a big possession because you could cut it to maybe a one-possession game. Absolutely, and, you know, it had the look that maybe NJIT was poised to make a run and try to put it away early. Seawolves have clawed back. Woodhouse with a runner! Woodhouse has nine! Using the box. Nice finish. This will count if it goes! Oh, it wasn't so far off. We have completed 20 minutes of an entertaining first half. NJIT by four over Stony Brook, 38-34. Kurt and I back with some halftime activities right after this timeout. You're watching college basketball on ESPN3. When you stop to think about it, the blood vessels in your brain operate a lot like this. All it takes is a single blockage to stop the flow of blood and cause a stroke. And in a matter of seconds, brain cells begin to die. Time is critical. You need an expert who can restore the flow and save your life. At Stony Brook, our team of endovascular specialists are experts in the latest technologies that can safely clear a clot. Because this isn't just medicine, this is Stony Brook medicine. What are you going to write? I don't know, Kit. What are you going to write? I got this. She rules. He's confident. She's loyal, powerful, a leader, tough, works hard, earned it. She's dedicated, athlete, legend, a teammate, <laughs> a champion. America East women's basketball, she rules. student, for the athlete, from the heart of our being to the will of our spirit, from the sweat of our brow 
to the ache of our muscles, from the core of our intellect to the height of our dreams, we strive to excel. On the court, in the classroom, and in the community, we are leaders. We are the student athletes of the America East Conference. And we know our future is more than just a game. We are the curious, the explorers, the innovators, defiant in the face of the status quo, unbound by tradition, unlimited in our potential, relentless in the pursuit of tomorrow's big ideas. We are Stony Brook University. We go far beyond. When you stop to think about it, the blood vessels in your brain operate a lot like this. All it takes is a single blockage to stop the flow of blood and cause a stroke. And in a matter of seconds, brain cells begin to die. Time is critical. You need an expert who can restore the flow and save your life. At Stony Brook, our team of endovascular specialists are experts in the latest technologies that can safely clear a clot. Because this isn't just medicine. This is Stony Brook medicine. Halftime at Stony Brook, Carl Roy Kurt Hilton, and what an entertaining first half. 38-34, NJIT on top of Stony Brook, Kurt. NJIT has three scores. Stony Brook has eight guys that have scored, and it's a four-point game. This is crazy. It really is. You know, if you look back, these teams could almost switch that role. Last year, Carson Purifoy, Rayshon McGrew, Jameel Warney, those typically were the big three, and at times, that's what it boiled down to or maybe even if you threw in an Ahmad Walker in there as well. But now NJIT, what they've got to do is continue to dominate the glass and then slow the Seawolves offense down a bit because they're shooting at 65%. Take some points off of that, and they've got a chance to really pull away. If you're Jeff Bowles, you got to box out and get more in attack mode on the offensive glass. And then you don't want this little bugaboo of a stat to come back at you Seawolves one in five when they trail at the half. Back with more right after this timeout from Stony Brook.
Hey Seawolves fans, I'm Jacqueline Latanza and this is your Seawolves United update. The athletic training department is now home to a much needed hydrotherapy treadmill thanks to a generous donation made by three Stony Brook doctors. As a physician and a surgeon, uh, I understand the importance of rehab and how critical that is to getting a injured athlete back into a life they enjoy. It really allows us to be more progressive with their rehabilitation and get them back on the field or back on the court sooner, make them less weight bearing on their joints. Any of the lower extremity injuries, um, we'd like to get them doing something that gets their cardiac going without putting them at risk. It allows us to keep them active. This has been a great benefit to me because it helps me progress faster and it's going to help me get stronger so I can get back on the court and do what I love to do. It really allows the student athlete to stay on campus, not miss time with the program, not miss time from class or, or their studies. Everything that we're trying to do is geared towards allowing our student athletes to have an incredible experience and now they're able to recover from their injuries faster. I'm Dr. Larry Hurst. I'm Dr. Jim Penna. I'm Dr. James Pacey and I'm Seawolves United. And that's your Seawolves United update. If you're interested in transforming the life of each student athlete here at Stony Brook, just like Dr. Hurst, Dr. Penna, and Dr. Pacey, visit SeawolvesUnited.com and join today. Halftime at Stony Brook and the Seawolves ending the first half on a 7-0 run to close to within four, 38-34. Close to within four because as you see in the halftime highlights, guy by the name of Tim Coleman really got it going, Kirk. He really did. I mean, he knocked down shots left side, right side. It didn't matter. A career high four three-pointers made in the first half. Only missed one. You see him hitting there from the right side. And he's really buoyed his team. 16 points in the first half on six of seven shooting. And then the highlight of the day, really, Junior St. Tell only scored two, but it was impressive there on the Lucas Woodhouse feed. And then the shot heard around the world <laughs> as he surpasses some guy named Steph Curry. Roland Niyama says, I can do that too, perhaps not quite as prolific, 
but very much needed. And then senior leadership at the end of the half, Lucas Woodhouse with a much needed runner, a little old school banker off glass, and that trimmed it to a four point deficit going into the locker room. And now they look to make the adjustments. You know, when you look at this stat sheet, again, it will come back to rebounding if it's an NJIT win because they've got five more offensive rebounds, which totals five more rebounds in the first half than Stony Brook. Right now, that's the Achilles heel for Jeff Bowles and his team to overcome that mount here in the second half. It really is. And then, you know, you always worry when you shoot like you did in the first half at 63% and you still find yourself in a deficit situation, you've now got to find ways to shift the effort to other parts of the floor. And I think you hit the nail on the head, Carl. Rebounding, particularly for the Seawolves, offensive rebound. Look, they got one offensive rebound in that half. And the one time they got it, they got two points off of it. They need a secondary source of scoring. Three scores in the first half for NJIT, led by Tim Coleman. He's got 16. DeMondlin's got 14. Abdul Lewis has eight. Roland. Niyama has nine, and Lucas Woodhouse has nine to lead the way for Stony Brook. Just about ready for the start of the second half. We're back with it right after this timeout. You're watching College Basketball on ESPN3. Carl Reuter and Kurt Hilton back here at the Island Federal Credit Union Arena in Stony Brook on the east end of Long Island. It's halftime, and we are ready for the start of the second half. NJIT led by as many as 11 in that first half, up here by 438-34. And Tim Coleman will inbound to DeMond Lynn, and we are ready to go. And Cam Mitchell will be jersey to jersey on Lynn to start this second half. Well, they bring Mitchell into the starting rotation for the second half really to try and cool Lynn down some. Well, got to cool down Abdul Lewis as well. He had eight in the first half, now he's got 10. So three scores for NJIT, that's it, three, and all three guys have double digits, Lewis, and, Coleman, and Lynn. And your, your post player has got you double digits. That's so important. Well, he plays long and strong, does Tim Coleman. And Abdul Lewis as well, you got 6'10", 225 sophomore in Lewis. 
Coleman's a senior at 6'5", 210. These are tough guys, strong guys, but versatile, athletic, a lot of agility. W without a doubt. And then what they, what the perimeter players appreciate about Lewis is that he brings some balance because now you got to consider doubling or devoting some defensive effort to him. Went up with the left hand. It didn't go down for Coleman, but there's some action on the rebound causing a whistle. It'll stay on the floor. And it will be NJIT to inbound. Second personal just whistled on Junior St. Tell. Neither team even close to any kind of foul trouble. But NJIT attacking the glass, getting second opportunities, drawing fouls as well. Woodhouse took the long rebound. He stops and gives it up. It's off the mark. Niyama missing. Battle underneath with Sturdivant and Lynn. And the officials telling both guys to just kind of ease it just a little bit. Good officiating there. Been very clean game so far. Oh, yeah. But when you see a little stuff going on, you want to nip it in the bud. Second personal on Lynn. Triggering the inbound will be Woodhouse. And we've got a whistle before the inbound. I think it might have been away from the basketball a hold. Let's see. I think it's chatter that's going on. Okay, yeah. They're, they're kind of just talking to everybody. And yeah, that's Matt Curtin in there working with Rob Tyberski and Chris Slattery. You know, in tight quarters, you exchange some pleasantries, Carl. Mm -hmm. Ask guys how they're doing. How's the family? How were the holidays? I'm sure that's exactly what it was. What, what do you, you do for, for New Year's? <laughs> <laughs> Sturdivant from 17. The high archer. It's short. That's a tough rebound. Clearing everyone out was Tim Coleman. And you see, again, denial of the second opportunity for that Seawolves offense, and that's a credit to how hard NJIT is working. Here's Lynn. Left open again is Coleman. Looking for the shooter's bounce. Didn't get it. Lewis went down on the floor for NJIT, but picked up by Stony Brook. Cam Mitchell gives it up to Lucas Woodhouse. See the pace that these two teams want to play at? That's been one of the themes of the game. Stony Brook wants to be a bit more deliberate. And NJIT, as we saw, a little run through the screen there. They want to get that tempo going. By the way, did uh, Roland get new sneakers for the holidays? Uh, he's sporting, yes, he's sporting a very bright fluorescent. <laughs> a little highlighter action down there. Tie up. The arrow is in favor of the Seawolves from the Stony Brook. You hey. flashed to a number before, Carl. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No. Um, Five and zero. Oh. You only got four at division, seconds to shoot. At division one, right? You know, I'll let you take it here. All right, we'll go back to it. Saint Tell with a turnaround. It's short. Battle. Saint Tell hustled in and got a whistle. Good hustle by Junior Saint Tell, the junior from Mays Landing, New Jersey. Yeah, what I was about to say is, you mentioned the five and zero oh mark at the division one level. The Seawolves hold that over NJIT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, NJIT comes into the building knowing that number. I guarantee you that, and they like nothing better than to make a statement on the Seawolves' home floor. Overall, it's 12-5 in favor of Stony Brook. 7-5 when, again, both teams were Division Three in the Skyline Conference. Two minutes gone by in this second half. Stony Brook with the ball down by six. Woodhouse. Here's St. Tell. Watched by Lewis. On the floor to his left. Gives it to Woodhouse. Flipped it up over his shoulder. Able to get it back after it hit the rim. Five seconds to shoot. Kick to the corner. St. Tell baseline left. Got it up. And it did not go. And follow did not go. Sturdivant missed it. And the rebound once again to NJIT. Well, some good offensive rebounding tries there by the Seawolves. It started off with that low set play. Woodhouse trying to find the lob along the baseline. But again, NJIT, good defensive interior. Lewis did not have the angle going off the window. Stony Brook with Woodhouse off the spin to the right corner. Gives it up to Sturdivant with a dribble drive. And it's on the outside. And again, a whistle-stopping play. A little bit more of a frenetic pace in this half. I was just about to say that the first half, it was very free-flowing. Now it's getting a bit more physical. Second half action. Everybody digging in a little more. Second foul on Abdul Lewis, and a whistle before the inbound again. Away from the ball, we got a hold. Yeah, I don't think we had this many whistles no. combined in the first half. We have had more fouls, I believe, in this first three minutes of the second half 
than we did in the entire first half. It's already five team fouls on NJIT. But you can also see it in how the game's being played. Wide open look at a three was off the mark. Last touch by Stony Brook. And it will be the Highlanders' ball up by six. Inbounding Rob Ukawuba, who is a 6'4 senior out of East Brunswick, New Jersey. He's got a body on him at 210. He's a middle linebacker, Ukawuba. Hey, that was, that was my position, and I don't know <laughs> if I'd want to mix it up with him. No. When you look at those shoulders, stay away from them. Lewis with a nice ball fake, then the drop off. And are we going to have a blocking foul? No, we got an offensive foul. Offensive foul has been whistled on NJIT. Well, it was a good move, but it's always difficult for a big fella not used to handling the ball to then distribute. I think it was absolutely the right idea and a great look by Lewis, but it's always harder for them to control their momentum, and so a very savvy play, in this case by Niyama, stepping in front, recognizing his personnel, and drawing the charge. Well, I did not see it put up on the board because they still have five team fouls for NJIT, and they called it a foul. And, you know, I mean, you can see Niyama's heels well outside the arc there. And Lewis on the move. Oh, now they've given it. It's on Lewis. And it's been his third. So you got to watch it. That's the sixth team foul, the third on Lewis. So now they're starting to creep up because you're only one away from shooting one and one with 16 and a half minutes remaining. And now they kick it right back to the other side with Woodhouse committing it. You know. Crowd doesn't like it. Woodhouse off the spin. You know, it's been a well-officiated game so far, so I'd be very, I'm in a tough position to criticize any call right there. So you leave it all in my lap as Woodhouse picks up the second. No, I, th I think it was fair. It was, was, it, was it tight? It probably was. But they're tightening the game up. I have too many guys that I know that are officials that will calling me over the weekend, and I don't know if it would be Happy New Year, Carl. <laughs> right. But but I also understand, Carl, that part of the game is tightening the game oh, 100%. up. And, some, and sometimes you make a call, and maybe it isn't spot on, but it's for the greater good, if you will. Hey, it's the th most thankless job in the arena. Mitchell's first, the third on Stony Brook, with 16-20 remaining. It was 38-34 NJIT at halftime, so we only had one basket. And that was by Abdul Lewis in the first minute of play. And now we played almost four minutes. Yeah, so three minutes, 40 seconds of drought for the Seawolves. And, you know, about two and a half minutes of dry spells for before that basket there. And guess who? Coleman, here he comes again. He's got 18 points. The senior out of Union, New Jersey. Eight-point lead. NJIT led by as many as 11 in that first half, offensive rebound was cherry-picked. Took right out of the hands of Sturdivant hey. by Damon Lynn. Hey, you're a big it. man. You put it on the floor around these guys, you're in trouble. Jacob Petrus is at the scores table. He'll check in at the next whistle for Stony Brook. Driving. Picked up in the corner by Lewis. Lynn got doubled. Somehow escapes. Kicks it to the... Other side of the floor, and that shot was missed. It was taken there by Chris Jenkins. And when we come back, it'll be NJIT ball. The Highlanders by eight over the Seawolves. Back with more. You're watching College Basketball on ESPN3.
We're back here at Stony Brook, and for the second time in this game, NJIT matching its largest lead at one time. Not matching it now, but they've led by as many as 11 on two different occasions. Right now, it's 42 to 34. But this is a Stony Brook team that has not scored yet, Kurt, in the second half. They need to put an end to that because you can't let this team get ahead of you by that many. They no. can score in a hurry. The game has also changed in its tone. It's gotten very, very physical. And now the Seawolves have not gotten an inside look at all. They've been one and done from the perimeter. So they've got to find a way to get Tyrell Sturdivan involved. And he's not the kind of player that they can dump it into every single possession. They've also got to supplement those post looks with some drives get into the lane Woodhouse Niyama those two guys come to mind Woodhouse particularly because he can drive and kick the one good thing Sturdivan has three of the four offensive rebounds for Stony Brook in the second half they only had one in the first half so they're being more active on second chance opportunities but they need to cash in that one was a little bit too strong off the mark by Coleman and now the Seawolves are led by Lucas Woodhouse well I know you always like the mid-range oh yeah you know and that there was not a three, needed the mid-range arsenal there. What nice a look. look by Woodhouse. Once again, it's inside to Petrus. He's got three field goals for six. He has played a very strong game on both ends of the floor. And, and so even though it wasn't in the lane, you see the eyes of Woodhouse breaks down the defense, gets to that next layer, and then the dish, and a great finish by Petrus, who, as you said, has been a force inside tonight. Yeah, double-digit minutes in the first half. Step back, looking at it. That's a long shot missed there by Coleman. And here comes an opportunity with Woodhouse again. So hot from three, but oh for the mid-range. He had four threes in that first half. He was four of four, matched a career high. Here's Secunda. Played only a couple of minutes. Again, he missed the game because of a bruise on his hand. I believe it was on his hand. He had a bone bruise, and... Boy, getting hammered right there was Mitchell, and he got fouled there by Coleman, and that is the seventh team foul on NJIT. So we're going to shoot one and one for the remainder of the game. NJIT is in, free, is in foul trouble right now. Well, first off, Mitchell might have gotten away with a travel coming to that stop there. Might have dragged that pivot foot, but then once he got the defender in the air, you know, now he's going to draw the foul, and as you bring that to light, that foul situation, this is where the Seawolves have to capitalize. Got to get a little secondary source of scoring there as we see the first one go down for Mitchell. By the way, NJIT, one of their last nine from the field. Two of three now from the line for Cam Mitchell, who's got four points in the game. Coleman sits down for NJIT with three personals. That one is long, but a great rebound by Petrus. Activity. We've seen it offensively from him tonight in a big way. And boy, do they need him. To coach's nightmare when a long rebound and you get an offensive rebound off a missed free throw. Petrus is setting up. He wants it. Backing it in. Head fake. And the foul! Jacob Petrus! Think he's fired up, Carl? That's a big man move right there. That's what they called in Brooklyn a horse move, where you just get it, you back it down. There's no finesse about that thing. It is just power. And Big Jake getting in the lane, and the Seawolves clawing to get right back in. Good free throw shooter at almost 73%, 8 of 11. Bendari picking up his first foul of the game. Back tap that's loose, picked up by Chris Jenkins. And then they turn it over as Jenkins was looking to feed Lynn. And Lynn just not, not ready for it, had his back turned, actually. And NJIT all of a sudden kind of disco discombobulated right here. Brian Secunda will inbound. Here's Lucas Woodhouse in a one-possession game with 1340 remaining in the contest. Good screen by Petrus. Spotting up and missing. Petrus got a hand on it, but he'll be called for over the top on the rebound. But you cannot fault hustle no. on that play by Petrus, who's been active on both windows tonight. Yeah, he holds the arm up. It wasn't the arm. It was the body was the problem. <laughs> as he gave a little hip check there on the way to the rim. 
But, yes, you want your big man aggressively seeking rebounds like that. Hey, a minute ago we were talking about NJIT having the largest lead, equaling it with 11. Backdoor cut. Now they score the goal. Yes, sir. Score the goal and the foul on a beautiful feed. And Tork able to finish for his first two points of the night. And that's a good call by the official because the ball was over the cylinder. You can't interfere with it. So whether it was on its upward trajectory doesn't matter. It was a finger roll. And so he had his hand over the rim. You see it right there. You know, a great look. And it's a situation where Coleman just turned the corner and the Seawolves defense parted. They got to do a better job of denying that lane entry. Secunda picks up the first personal. Free throw is missed by Tark. He's now 0 for 2 from the line. It's a five-point game. Stony Brook with possession. And I said Coleman. It was Tark, rather, that did that. Turn the corner. Got a screen. Woodhouse from Petrus. Takes it in deep. Tipped up by Petrus. Did not fall. And then off the fingertips of Tark. And they're saying, no, it's off the fingertips of Petrus. Jeff Bowles, baseline not happy with the call yeah that one looked like it might not have been the right situation there but to no avail they didn't review it so it's academic Ukaruba holding it taken away almost by Secunda and then Secunda commits his second personal foul with the wraparound Both teams, I think, right now need to get a little composure. Right now, I think both teams getting caught up in the emotion of the game, Carl. They got to get back to business. If you're the Seawolves, you need to be efficient in your offense. And then defensively, you know, NJIT, they've got to now challenge shots, not allow open shooters for the Seawolves. Mohamed Bendari gives it off. Tough drive. It didn't go for Rob Ukaruba. And now it's Woodhouse back again, down by five with 12 and a half minutes to play in this second half. Well, you mentioned in the first half there were only three scorers. So now everybody else on NJIT has kind of been watching the action. They haven't gotten into the flow of it from their offense. Now they've got four scores, and that one was batted around because of the Anthony Tark two-pointer before. Left open is Shaquan Gibbs. Again, his dad, Shelton, played for St. Peter's College back in the early 80s. Down low it went, Bendari. And batted out of bounds. Last touched by NJIT with a timeout on the floor and 11.52 remaining in this second half. NJIT by five over Stony Brook. Back with more right after this timeout.
How about the inside play all night long, Kurt, of this guy? He's really been a power machine. And then you see the nice, strong finish in there. You know, one of the most underrated things that he does, when we look at that, even when we saw one of the highlights earlier, the alley-oop to Junior St. Tell, he sets such great screens. And by doing that, he creates great space, not only for Lucas Woodhouse as a shooter, but also as a passer. He's got a clear passing lane. Hey, if I'm a ball handler, I want Jacob Petrus setting a screen for me. He's played 16 minutes tonight, Petrus. He's four of four from the floor. He's got eight points and he's got three rebounds. He's also got two blocks. He's been all over the floor, by far his best game as a Seawolf. I, I think so, I mean, because he's given you every facet of the game, and then he's brought in motion and he's fired up his teammates as well. So we'll go back into play, and Stony Brook will bring it up 94 feet down by five, less than 12 on the clock. Hey, by the way, how's this game ground to a halt? Stony Brook shooting 17% in this second half and 25% for NJIT. You see, or Egbu is back on the floor, wearing number one for Stony Brook. 12 seconds to shoot with Woodhouse controlling. Being watched by Gibbs, he spins. He's outside the arc with six. Blocked by Lynn. Boy, he's got as much hops as or Egbu did going up for the three. Really did. Great close out there, challenging the shot. Spinning. Mendari with a kick out. Off the mark was Lynn. Battle for it. Offensive rebound. Ukuruba, and they kick it out for that fresh 30. Hey, neither team can buy a bucket on the first chance here in the second half. Here's Tark with 15 to Gibbs, who gets about 15 minutes a night as a freshman. Missed from New York, Lynn. Underneath, a battle once again, and it's a whistle against NJIT. And remember NJIT, they've been in the penalty. Now nine teams, team fouls for them, so they're one away from the giving the Seawolves a double bonus. Seawolves, they don't have any fouls to commit either. Next one will be NJIT shooting the one and one So the final 10 minutes and 50 seconds might take a while. <laughs> it's Secunda who's going to the line for the first time in this game. Five of seven from the line this year. That's 71%. Missing. And missed badly on that. Secunda normally a very reliable free throw shooter. Way off on that. Lynn gives it up to Tark, who holds it high. Off the fingertips and wisely let it go out of bounds. It went off of Mohamed Bendari's hands. See, here's why coaching is a special calling, Carl. This is like a different game. Oh, second half, first half? Oh, my yeah. goodness. I mean, we were seeing shooting percentages in the high 50s and 60s, and now it looks like me and you playing one-on-one -on -one out there, <laughs> struggling to find a bucket. They are struggling right now. It was 38-34 NJIT by four at halftime. So not a whole lot of scoring in the second half, but a whole lot of fouls have been called, and that slowed the game down. Here's Woodhouse. It's okay to slow the game down, but the Seawolves, the pace they want to play, they want to slow it down a little bit against NJIT. They got to cap it with some scores. Rimmed out. Niyama. Missing from about 10 feet right side. Not a bad little post look there. Turnaround jumper. But nobody's been able to get anything going. And that goes both ways. Ukuruba gives it up to Abdul Lewis playing with three personal fouls. Good defense by Petrus there. Challenging him. Not giving him an opportunity to pass from that high post. Ukuruba with the left hand dribble. Six to shoot. Here's Coleman. Ball faking. Kick to the corner, stolen away by UC Eregbu. Not a good offensive sequence. A lot of standing around, dribbling on the perimeter. No ball movement. We saw activity in the first half. Great ball re uh, reversals. Stagnant there. No call, surprisingly, on that contact. Maybe a good no call, but when you got 19 fouls, and that would have been two shots for Woodhouse, is over 90%. Catch, shoots, Secunda. Rimmed out. And Here's so Lynn. Taking it the distance, flipped it up, and he got fouled by Secunda. I like that decision by Lynn. Two on two. So you got even numbers, but Lynn, the ball handler, you're dynamic. 
take it to the rack, no pull up for threes there, put the pressure on the defense, see if you can create and draw a foul under control. And off the crossover, he had Secunda backing up and that lateral move could not backpedal and catch up. If you're Lynn and you see Secunda, you recognize, I like that matchup. So here's Lynn going to the line. 87% coming in. He's two of two, he's got 14. Second leading scorer in the A-Sun Conference at 22 a game. He's now got 15 points. He had 14 at the break, so that's only his first point here in the second half. And it's funny because he's got that point total, and it's very quiet. Yes. Although when it did get loud, he banged threes consecutively, and that really lit it up. He's got 16 points right now, and out of town score, how about this one? 56-56 to Paul and Villanova with three and a half minutes remaining in the game. And Dave Lato trying to make a little statement out there. Maybe Chris Jenkins might have something to say by the end of that one. Hey, Cam Mitchell! He's got six. Well, that little runner, that little floater, capped the end of the first half for the Seawolves, and now they're hoping that it kind of opens the rim up for them. It's got some saran wrap on it the last few times down the floor. Here's Gibbs, the freshman, Coleman for three, off the mark. Rebound on a hop, went to Sturdivant, quickly gave it up to Lucas Woodhouse, who runs the point for Stony Brook. Coleman hasn't been able to find the range in the second half the way he had it cooking in the first. Backing in strong, Sturdivant for two, he's got four on the night. Hey, use a little hip there to clear the big man back and then held the ball, a little, almost a double pump to make sure that he had the space he needed against the 6'10 guy. Four point game at halftime, NJIT by that margin. Now it's a three point lead. Eight minutes and 10 seconds remain in the contest. Wouldn't mind seeing NJIT give the postman a little touch here. Oh, what a great look, Lynn finding the opening down the lane. Rob Ukawupa with his first two. Or you could do that, a little drive and dish. Get inside the defense again, the creativity of Lynn. First two in the game for Ukaruba, who came in averaging almost nine. Whistle, timeout on the floor, 7.48 to play in this second half. It's a five-point game. NJIT on top. You're watching college basketball on ESPN3. Call Roder, Kurt Hilton back here at Stony Brook. 7.48 remaining in this second half. NJIT on top by five, led by four at the break. And first half, different ball game than what we've seen here in the second half. More tightly contested. Shots aren't going down like they did in the first half. A whole lot more fouls being called. And now it's going to be who could play defense and knock down a shot and who's going to be able to knock down a free throw because we're going to shoot them for the remainder. Yeah, that's that's a big one there, the knocking down of the free free throws. This this had a very crisp feel to it in the first half, a fluid out of con out of conference contest. And now all of a sudden, Carl, this feels like as you're grinding down to March in conference play, 
it has that type of feel. The crowd's into it. Players are into it. It's gotten very, very physical. The officials have had to try and take control of this one. And now I think this has become not just a contest of skill, but a contest of will. Well, following this game, Stony Brook on the road. They'll go to Brown and then New Hampshire before returning here Sunday, January 8th against Albany. And we got a whistle underneath. Well, great ball reversal by the Seawolves. I mean, two or three extra passes there, and Yaboa shot the air ball, but Sturdivant, ever ready, creating a second opportunity. Timeout on the floor. We're back right after this. Don't you wish you could be in the middle of that huddle to see what Jeff Bowles, first-year head coach, is talking about with his team down by five with 7.32 remaining? Well, if I'm to hazard a guess, I think he's just trying to be calm. He's trying to transmit that we need to score and be efficient and lock up on defense, we meaning the Seawolves, but you can't really get overexcited and have your players thinking that you're panicking. You, you want to transmit that calm demeanor. I think if you're on the other side, Coach Kennedy, you can be a little bit more animated because you've got seniors, you've got veterans. They're battle-tested. They know their roles, and you've got to almost challenge them to try and close this game out. So I think the coaching personas and the mannerisms sort of have to fit the rosters and the stage of development that they're in. 67% from the line. First trip tonight for Sturdivant. He knocks it down. He's got five. Second leading score at 11. Leading rebounder at six. Gives you the effort every single night, does the junior. Two of two. Quiet young man from Chester, Pennsylvania. Very unassuming, but like you said, the hard worker, a glue guy. Every team needs a glue guy. So here you see a little share in the basketball. Off balance, contact made. Ukaruba got it off, but uh, no whistle. Here's Woodhouse. Starting back with a chance to tie, maybe even go take the lead with a four-point play. And you see Woodhouse, when he gives the ball up, if the shot doesn't go up, he's coming back to reclaim it, run that offense. He was looking inside off the hesitation. That might have cost him. The turnover fell into the hands of Lewis. Length and athleticism on the defensive perimeter there. Really responsible for the turnover. Now again, see the ball movement. Picked off. Here's Woodhouse. Sturdivant one-on-one -on -one with Ukawuba. And it's a foul, but we're going to be shooting here. Fortunate decision because that was a bad decision by Lucas Woodhouse. You don't give as a point guard your four or five man the ball on the run too beyond the arc on the run that's a tough and tall order for Sturdivant and they got bailed out there by the foul 
Third foul on Rob Ukawuba from East Brunswick, Brunswick, New Jersey, the senior. So Sturdivant, who just 30 seconds ago knocked down two, has two more here. And as you said, this could be such an indicator of who's going to win this game, the performance at the line. Sturdivant now notching his seventh point with that first free throw. Just grazed the front iron, picked off by Lewis. It's a two-point game with six and a half minutes remaining. Yeah, didn't shoot that second free throw, felt for it, shot put it in. Stony Brook, Kurt has played some very, very close games at home all season in non-conference. Oh, and the foul! Damon Lynn going from the left side. He's got 18. Well, you put it in the hands of your best ball player. You've been moving the ball well the last two. Might have even drawn a foul that didn't get called the last time. But now Lynn again creating off the bounce, getting inside, and then, hey, he's productive when he gets to the line at that 87%. And he's 4-4 four four for tonight, now 5-5. Five five. He's got 19 points, a game high. Tim Coleman, his teammate, has 18. Abdul Lewis has 10, leading the way. For Stony Brook, still Niyama and Woodhouse with nine apiece, but they both had nine at the break. Sturdivant in tight, would not go. Chris Jenkins, the big rebound in a five-point game. Top of the broadcast, remember what we said? Woodhouse, got to step up, got to lead. Got to get a, a bucket for yourself to show your team, hey, I'm here, I'm with you. 15 to shoot. Mitchell on Lynn, step back from 25 off the mark. A little ambitious, and you saw it, saw it didn't have a great rotation, so he didn't have a good grip on that as he let it go. And then Woodhouse tried to carve his way through the paint, and he got hit, and he'll go to the line for two shots, and this is a man that is hitting 91%, 42 of 46 on the season, first trip to the line tonight. Now look, mentality-wise, he's a passer first. But he's got to get a little selfish and look for his shot. Not to the exclusion of his teammates, but to keep the defense honest and also to kind of inspire teammates because he's the senior on this team. He is the unquestioned leader on this team on the floor. Out of Harbor Fields High School, two of two. He's got 11 big free throws. The last foul on Gibbs. The freshman picked up his first for NJIT. Three-point game once again. Always nice when your point guard shoots 91%, isn't it? Keep it in his hands. Off the cut, Gibbs. They didn't give it to him. Crowd into it. Here's Lynn going baseline in traffic. Oh, Damon Lynn has 21. And by the way, I don't think you can play better defense than Mitchell did right there. Challenged the shot. Had him step for step, but Lynn's just too good a player. He was belly up. Here's Secunda, catch, shoot, short. Flying through, Niyama could not get it. And it's a big defensive rebound for NJIT. Seawolves have not really been able to dial it up from three-point range tonight. Only three of 13. Here's Chris Jenkins, who's another middle linebacker if you want to put him on the football field. Here's Gibbs at only 150 pounds. He looks to be a little bit more than 150, but that's what they have him listed at. Two to shoot, Coleman for three. Off the mark, good box out by Sturdivant. Excellent box out. Coleman, one of seven in this second half, Carl, after being on fire in the first. It was like a Rick Mahorn box out, the old Detroit Piston. Off the mark there, back tap, great job. Here's Mitchell. Woodhouse had an opportunity and thought about it. Step back three, Woodhouse. Niyama, no. And then the rebound to the hands of Anthony Tark. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Frustration foul there by Niyama, too. But I'll tell you what, he is giving you great effort. The back tap there, that was him. You saw him almost get the offensive rebound on the last possession. He's been skying, working hard, trying to get an opportunity. But the Seawolves, they've been ice cold from the perimeter. That's been the biggest story here. Three of 15 from beyond the arc. And they've had some great looks, Carl, where they've just been unable to knock them down. Talk is 0 for 2. Now 6 of 17 from the line on the season. 
no good there. That was the ninth team foul on Stony Brook. So the rest of this game, we're shooting two free throws on either side. And NJIT hasn't been able to put this game away despite the Seawolves having a scoring drought now that's been over four and a half minutes. Woodhouse on a fadeaway. He's got 13, and it's a three-point game. That's his first field goal in the second half for Woodhouse. Exciting game here. And now, let's see who can execute best down the stretch. Mitchell all over Lynn, belly to belly defensively. Away from the ball, whistle foul. Lynn and Mitchell got tangled up, and they're going to get it on Cam Mitchell. Yeah, and, and Mitchell did give a little extra push. Timeout on the floor with 3.28 remaining. It's a tight one. NJIT by three. We're back with more right after this. Call Roy to Kurt Hilton back here. It is a three-point game, NJIT on top. They've gotten money from their money player in DeMond Lynn. Well, I'll steal your little catchphrase, or paraphrase it anyway. Big players make big plays at the right time. And Lynn, he wanted the ball in his hands, and then he had the savvy to know what the situation called for, capped an and one, extended a lead that had been trimmed to three, back up to six with a brilliant play. That's why he's one of the best players in the country, Carl. And, you know, argue, I don't think it's an argument. The best player of all time in that program. 100%. And one of the reasons, and a key reason, that this team, Stony Brook, with Jeff Bowles, the head coach, getting back in it, they've got nine offensive rebounds now to 10 for NJIT. They've closed the gap, rebounding 33 to 30, NJIT on top. But that gets you back in the game because offensive rebounds, Kurt, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that that gives you a second chance at the basket. Absolutely, second chance points. Remember, at one point it was 9-0 in favor of NJIT. It's 9-6, and that's in large part due to the effort of Tyrell Sturdivant, who's gotten four offensive rebounds for the Seawolves. Here's a guy now at the line who's 5 of 5 on the season, came in again at 87%. That's money in the bank. He's got 22, which is his season average. He's second in the A-Sun Conference at 22 points a game. 23 points for the guy that has a 3.6 GPA. He's got numbers all over the place. And he is a cool customer. Double nickels on the board for NJIT. Stony Brook down by five. Woodhouse used a wraparound on Lynn to hold him off. Shot clock down to 12. Woodhouse turned the corner. Nice shovel to Sturdivant, and he got fouled. But again, great vision by the point guard to see Sturdivant down low. Boy, and in traffic, too. And you mentioned the wraparound. You know, Lucas will do that sometimes. Extend, almost get away with a hook. But the vision, always looking up, always the head up off the bounce, can see the entire floor. Three or four from the line tonight for Sturdivant. He's got seven. Came in averaging 11. Second on the team, first is short. 
You can see we saw him on a roll, three straight, then he missed his fourth. But now when you get into these situations, ball gets a little tight, you know, a little heavier. Palms get a little clammier. And the rim gets a little bit smaller. He's now missed three in a row from the charity stripe in a close game. Less than three minutes on the clock. You know this guy's going to have the ball for the most part, Lynn. Lewis kick out to Lynn with 12. Good defense on the perimeter by Niyama. Here's Coleman, got a screen from Lewis, three ball Lynn. Rattled in and out. Battle for it, third event with the big pause. Got it away from Lewis. Yeah, Niyama got very lucky there because you can't let the top active three-point shooter get Niyama a rebound on a screen. Good pick on the offensive glass and he's fouled off the rebound from the Woodhouse miss. So he tries to atone for it on the offensive end. What I was trying to say before, Carl, you got to know your situation. Remember we talked about that, grasping the situation. Niyama can't allow himself to get screened against Lynn, knowing what Lynn's resume is. But on the offensive end, nice hustle. And then the ability to draw the foul all be meaningless, though, if you can't make them from the charity stripe. 55% knocks down the first his first point now in this second half he had nine at the break now has ten gotta make this one cleanly makes two of two has 11 three-point game 225 left and here go the seawalls again within three coleman taking it right to the basket Battle for it. Sturdivant with the pull. Here's Woodhouse to the corner. And overshot if he was a quarterback, his intended receiver in Brian Secunda. Yeah, and the spacing just wasn't there. Lucas a little too close so to, to Secunda. Usually delivers it with great touch. Unable to get it done there. So three minutes, excuse me, two minutes and nine seconds in a three-point game. Following that turnover, all for this timeout, it'll be NJIT basketball and non-conference hoops, end of December. <laughs> the ironic thing about these two schools, Kurt, is that the next game for both of these schools will be Brown. On New Year's Eve, Stony Brook is at Brown. On January the 4th, Brown will be at NJIT. So the Ivy League will play these two schools next. I don't think anybody in the building right now worried about those matchups. They, they want to see what's going on here. Seawolves have fought, but they haven't been efficient offensively in the second half, nor for that matter has NJIT. But they've got the X Factor and Lynn, a guy who wants the ball and knows what to do with it and has been really, really good, particularly in the second half at imposing his will on the game. Brown might have a, uh, an X Factor in Steven Spieth, the brother of Jordan. That guy can light it up from three-point land. He is not a bad player oh, at no. all. No, no, no. I sat down with him last year. I had a nice conversation with him. I asked him if he ever outdrove Jordan. And he kind of once, I go, and then I'd walk off the, off the golf course too. Oh, using the class. 20 points now in the game for Tim Coleman. And 16 of them came in the first half, and they've tried to run a couple of plays for him in the second without success. But in a big moment, he comes up big. You see or Egbu missing from trifecta land, and then Secunda colliding with Lynn on the rebound, and it's against the Seawolves. And Secunda trying to keep the ball alive, but boy, the wrong guy to collide with. Number four for Brian. But more importantly, again, he puts Lynn at the line, who has been just phenomenal there, just seven his usual seven. self. Yeah, seven for seven is pretty good. Game high, 23, one more than his season average. Came in as the all-time leading scorer in this game, 2,030 points. By the time he gets done, he might be the all-time great three-point shooter past Steph Curry tonight as he's got 24 now. Eighth place all by himself. He's now looking for his 
Free throw off the mark. Well, see, I almost said it, but I didn't. <laughs> but it was the jinx anyway. Two possession game, 125 left. Woodhouse, why not take the two? They gave it to you. Yeah, they were ba almost staying home because of his threat to pass, and that allowed him one-on-one -on -one against Lynn. Speaking of which, he's got the ball. Jenkins. Inside the finish. Very nice play call there. A little weave up top, and then the flash cut to the basket. Wide open, work like a charm. First two for him. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Sturdivant takes it strong, and he's fouled. That'll stop the clock with an even 50. Got to make these free throws when you're down by six. But we've seen it's trending in the wrong way for Tyrell. Made his first three, has missed his most recent three. I do like, however, Carl, the fact that there was no hesitation in him. He wasn't thinking about what has he been doing at the free throw line. He got the ball. He took it to the rim strong, drew the foul. That's good on so many levels because now you've also stopped the clock. If you're the Seawolves, you've got to think about trying to crash the offensive glass. And then, obviously, the guy you don't want to foul, as we see Lewis departing with his fifth foul, the guy you don't want to foul if you're the Seawolves is Lynn. He sits down with the 10 points. He was very strong in the early minutes of the first half, Abdul Lewis. Look, I think he brings a great element to oh, yeah. JIT. gives him that inside-outside attack. He got double digits, blocked some shots. Gave you a double-double in rebounds as well. So, great night for that young man. Well, back in the saddle is Sturdivant. That's a big free throw. Has eight points now. As you mentioned, made his first three, missed his last three. Cashed in on that one. Second opportunity here to get it to a four-point game with 50 seconds on the clock. You can tell by the body language, though. Even though he made it, he wasn't comfortable on the release. Short there into the hands of Mohamed Bandari. So Mohamed Bandari will go to the line. On the season, the big guy has gone there four times. He's knocked down three. So let's see what Bandari, 6'9", 235 pound sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey, again. St. Anthony High School, high school teammate of Coleman. That must have been some dynamic inside play for Bob Hurley. Yeah, Shaquan Gibbs also a St. Anthony's. Hey, I can think of a, a lot worse places to go to recruit basketball players than St. Anthony's, I'll tell you what. Well, when you look at it, and Brian Kennedy said, look, why wouldn't you stay home? He said, we have Union Catholic, St. Anthony, uh, St. Patrick. I mean, uh, you got a bunch of schools in that area. They got five of the top 20 schools in the country. Hey. If you to keep, recruit from. If you keep a couple of those guys home, you're in business. Seven-point game right now. And there's only 49.2 seconds remaining. So my question to you, do you have to look three now, or would you, if they give you the quick two, you're going to take the quick two? Well, I think you, I think you take the quick available shot but it's got to be a good shot, Carl. You, you can't waste the possession. You're now painted into the corner if you're the Seawolves where every shot has to be productive. So you don't need the three. You'd love it if it declares itself based on the guys on the floor, the likely candidates for that. Obviously, Woodhouse, Secunda, you've got Niyama who can also knock it down. Cam Mitchell does not look to shoot, can hit the three, and obviously Sturdivant's the guy down on the box. And they will not pressure the basketball, so you could roll it up. And now Woodhouse picks it up, and the clock starts. Woodhouse looking for the quick one? No. Here's Secunda outside the arc. Now the seconds are counting away. Miyama off his foot. Battle for the ball. And this will be a tie-up. This will be possession arrow in favor of Stony Brook, but they lost precious seconds there. They did, and it was because of great man-to-man -man defense and great effort capped by phenomenal effort getting on the floor. They almost came up with that possession off that loose ball, Carl. They worked hard on that defensive sequence. NJIT with one timeout left. Stony Brook has two down by seven. They need something real fast. Oh, nearly. 
was going to go to the line for a three-point play, but Woodhouse will get two free throws. You're not in that situation of missing the second free throw or anything dramatic like that. Just got to make two and then foul immediately. And right now, the way this game's going, you want to foul if you're Stony Brook anybody other than Lynn. You'll take a chance on anybody else because he's so much of the guy down the stretch that in these situations, between he and Coleman, they almost exclusively handle that situation. So even if you're statistically a good guy for them, you're not the guy that handles the ball in these types of situations. Three of three from the line for Woodhouse. Following up the 17-point effort in the win against St. Francis. Now has 16 tonight. Leads the team in scoring at 12 and a half. Now 17. Back-to-back -back games with 17 points. Five-point game. 30 seconds left. Both teams obviously in the double bonus, so you can't really foul here. You got to play some tough, tough defense and try to force a turnover. Timeout called. Last one for NJIT. So now Stony Brook has two. No more for NJIT with 27.1 on the clock. Well, great job there by tying up Lynn in the corner, using the baseline as an extra defender, and then you didn't have to foul him. You prompted the timeout call. So very, very smart defensive play right there. All right, before I forget, famous alumni from NJIT. You know who graduated from this school in 1941? No, sir. Wally Shira. See, I actually... One of seven, one of seven of the original astronauts that was chosen for Project Mercury. And let me tell you this. Go ahead. Let me impress you with my knowledge impress now. Impress me with your knowledge. He is help. the only astronaut that was in the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. So it's great that I told you who the famous alumni guy is, and you followed up with a great bio on the late Wally Shira. See, that's why we're a good team, <laughs> because this was not rehearsed. No. And because I am a sci-fi guy and, you know, very much into that stuff, I actually remember one of the best experiences that I had was to go to Cape Canaveral on a tour, and they had this program, Lunch with an Astronaut, and I got to have lunch with Neil Armstrong. Boy, put that in the memory bank for the rest of your life. That is a great moment. That's like meeting Mickey Mantle. Oh, it's unbelievable. Babe Ruth. You know, wow. I mean, you just, you can't imagine. Okay, so now Rob Tyberski comes over and says they get a new 10 seconds, which means to bring it over the midcourt line. How about that? Don't you, that's why you talk to officials, Kurt, before the game. Absolutely. <laughs> How about that? What do they got? Stepped out of bounds on the sideline with 24. So he stepped out, did Lynn, opportunity, Stony Brook. And forced to do so by great hustle and great defense by Lucas Woodhouse, who's not the greatest on-the-ball defender, but very, very smart, and again, using the court dimensions as an ally. So now with 24 seconds left, Stony Brook called for time which means the Seawolves have one left with 24 seconds left in a five-point game. Now, again, first available good shot, whether it's a three or a two, or are you going to look for the three here? First available again because of the number five, but, boy, you really like the three, and I'll tell you why, because you're going to have to foul, and you're going to have to put somebody from NJIT at the line. And ideally, if they're going to make, you want one of two at, you know, at worst. You'd like them to miss, but the likelihood of missing two is slim. It's a good free throw shooting team NJIT has, and they're going to get it in the right ball handlers. But I think with the Seawolves, you really got to diagram something here that gives a three-point shooter an opportunity. But if the two's there, you got to take it. I like the ball again in Woodhouse's hands. You've seen Secunda going right to the corner. That's one of his sweet spots. Junior St. Tell will inbound from just the opposite side of the floor. Gets it to Woodhouse. Stepping back. Knocks it down! Lucas Woodhouse has 19! It's a three-point game 
with 20.1 seconds remain. So the senior co-captain stepping up in these last couple of minutes got the defensive play and then the step back two. Hey, leadership, right? We talk about it, and he showed it right there. Big shot, must-have shot, and he makes it. Now everything is must for the Seawolves because they must stop here. But again, look at those NJIT players. They're cool customers. They've been down this road before. You talked about all of those road games against the tough opponents, the Purdue's, the Minnesota's, all of those opponents. This is all a precursor to these types of games on the road at Minnesota, at Kent State, at Iona, at Temple. I mean, that's a who's who. They played some, you know, some quality teams, and they're senior laden. I expect them to be poised. And again, hey, no surprise. Fans at home can predict this one. They're going to look to get the ball in the hands of Lynn. Kurt, last four home games for Stony Brook, a one-point loss to Loyola, a two-point win over Northeastern, a five-point win over Lehigh, a five-point loss to Rutgers every single game is down to the final one or two possessions. And that's a, you know, that's an indicator of strong coaching right there. You're in every game. You're not getting blown out. And then we know Jeff Bowles stresses the goal, defend the home floor. Let's see what happens here. Inbounding will be Ukaruba. Then they give it to Jenkins. You can run after a made field goal. Here's Lynn. They're going to have to go after him. Clock winding down, and then they go get him with 14.2. And now you're sending a guy to the free throw line that came in at 86%. You know that number has gone up because tonight he has gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of 9. Game high 24. The one miss was his last one from the free throw line. And really... They had to get him the ball because nobody else in the game has scored more than two points. Nobody in the get else in the game currently. So he needed to get the ball, and that was a well-designed concept to switch off, run players along the baseline, and he canned the two. Woodhouse taking it right to the rack. Wouldn't go. Put back St. Town. Again, it's a three-point game with 6.7. Can anyone catch the guy? Lynn is bumped from behind, and he might be able to close it out right here with 4.2. He goes right back to the free throw line. Well, NJIT can really smell the victory now, and they have come in here and competed from minute one in the Allen Federal Credit Union Arena, looking for their first win against the Stony Brook Seawolves at the Division I level, and misses. Lynn misses the first. He's got 26, his career in season high, 34, November the 14th at Utah State. Misses both, opportunity on a three, Woodhouse launches, counts if it goes, and it rims out at the horn. Oh my gosh, you would never have said that a guy at almost 90% would miss two, and Woodhouse, Kurt, he had a chance. Oh boy, did he have a chance. Did we just see a heck of a game? Hey, March Madness, that can wait. This was great. 64-61, NJIT victorious. Damon Lynn, game high 26, followed by Tim Coleman, his teammate. He had 20. Lucas Woodhouse had 19 to lead the way for Stony Brook. The three at the horn didn't go. Stony Brook falls to four and eight. NJIT improves to seven and eight. So that'll do it from Stony Brook. Again, the final, NJIT 64, Stony Brook 61.